So if you clicked on this video, you probably did so for one of two reasons. The first being already have either a 23 Ultra or a 15 Pro Max and you want to validate your purchase. B being that you don't have either of these phones, you're curious about them, you have some extra money, ready for an upgrade, and you're wondering which is going to be the best bang for buck in terms of value, overall usability and day-to-day -day life usage, and overall features. I've used the S23 Ultra a ton since its release, not only as a reviewer for you guys here on the channel, but also for a lot of my clinical work as a therapist. And the iPhone 15 Pro Max I've been sporting every single day is my daily driver with SIM card and Apple Watch Ultra in tandem, so I can get a more comprehensive idea of what this thing does, what it's capable of, and how it suits up against the S23 Ultra. Now, purchases are gonna be validated, and I always play things as objectively and down the middle as possible, and so, Although these are both really great phones in a number of different ways, there are definitely things you need to know about before you spend a thousand plus dollars on either of these. Now the screens for me on both of these are as close to a tie as you could possibly get. The iPhone 15 Pro Max has actually beaten the S23 Ultra in terms of bezels. You're looking at an 89.75% screen to body ratio on the 15 Pro Max and an 89.5% screen to body ratio on the S23 Ultra. Honestly, practically speaking, on both of these phones you're getting a crisp, clear, immersive of display much more so on the 15 Pro Max than even on the 14 Pro Max. 15 Pro Max does have slightly slimmer bezels than S23 Ultra, and I do prefer them a little bit more. But honestly, objectively, you're getting a fantastic display on both of these phones, no matter what you're doing, watching media, playing games, you name it, they nail it. So two of the biggest benefits of both of these phones, no matter which one you're going to be getting, is that you don't have to worry about battery. You can wake up in the morning, get ready for work, go to your work day, come back home, go to a shopping mall like where I'm at right now, hang out, eat, and when you're back home, you're gonna have like 15 to 10% battery life around like 10 to 11 o'clock at night. No matter which one of these you're picking up, you're gonna be good. The only caveat to that, however, that is that I know Apple addressed the overheating issue on the 15 Pro Max. As of right now, this does throttle way worse in more situations than the S23 Ultra. It gets really hot, and I've noticed that impact battery a little bit though on average i can still get to the end of my day with this phone you're not getting overheating issues on the s23 ultra i've never had a problem with that that being said though all things equal both of these phones are going to get you to the end of your day no matter which phone you pick up right now with all of the updates for both of these devices you're getting a spectacular camera experience flat out hands down both are stellar in both normal pictures and video. So that's the, like the baseline blanket statement. Getting into the weeds a little bit, you're gonna see that the 15 Pro Max, although it does have an improved zoom capability at 25 times, you're still getting better detail retention on S23 Ultra. And portrait shots both look really, really good, but the S23 Ultra seems to have a slightly sharper photo. And I don't mean over sharpening in a way that looks bad. It looks good, organic, and it looks how it looks to my eye. Up close subject portraits that are like not people look a little bit soft on the iPhone 15 Pro Max. Something interesting I did notice though is that when you're taking those pictures of large landscapes and you're taking like sort of like a down the aisle sort of picture, there's much better clarity and detail retention on the 15 Pro Max, kind of like you see these bushes right in front of me. But if you start to zoom out a little bit farther, you'll see that there's better detail retention over on the cobblestone or the brick on the ground. And there's definitely more detail retention over in like the farther up trees. Now, when it comes to video, you're getting 8K resolution over here on the S23 Ultra, which looks fantastic. And log format video files and video footage on the 15 Pro Max are amazing. This is one of those things where like for me as a content creator, right? And for those of you who are also content creators out there looking at a phone, log format on a phone is remarkable. I think that in terms of like crispness and detail, things are better on the S23 Ultra. But if you're looking for better highlight roll off and colors, I think that log format on the 15 Pro Max looks stunning. I've really enjoyed taking video on this. It's still fantastic over here on the 23 Ultra, but if you're looking for a little bit more of that nitty gritty editing to use that format for like your content creation and media, I think this edges it out just slightly in the video format's perspective specifically. If you guys are enjoying the video and want to stay up to date with other tech content I've coming here to the channel, hitting the subscribe button is the best way to do so. A thumbs up goes a long way to helping me out here on the channel. And let me know if you guys are siding with the 15 Pro Max with an Apple emoji or the S23 Ultra with like that crystal ball emoji. I honestly think there are really good arguments for both, but let me know what you guys are siding with. 
there are sort of small things over on the 15 Pro Max that you can't do that feel sort of restrictive in a way that almost feels unnecessary, right? So one of those things like on the S23 Ultra, I have a clipboard on my keyboard. There is no clipboard over on the keyboard for iPhones. Unless I'm completely wrong, you guys let me know in the comment section down below if there is a solution for that. It feels weird to have that omitted in a super premium device like this. Additionally, navigation, right? So on the iPhone, you have to swipe from left to right to go back to the previous page on any given app, where on the S23 Ultra, you can do that as well. However, you can also customize it so you can swipe from right to left if you want to and accomplish the same exact thing, which for me as a right-handed person, I prefer. I swipe on my S23 Ultra or my Fold 5 a ton from right to left because my thumb just naturally lies there. And so swiping over is much easier than reaching over and then swiping back to where my thumb was originally resting, if that makes sense. And on the keyboard, for example, I have to access the second page to access like my periods and commas. On S23 Ultra, it can be that way if you wanted to, but you have the option to make it so that you can hold down the key and have access to the second row quickly. Those are little things, they're not make or break distinctions, but I find it weird that you just can't do those things over here. Simple software. It's not like this is superiorly stronger and that's why I can do it. You know what I mean? All right, so after spending a lot of time with the 15 Pro Max, something sort of occurred to me. And so now the way that I see it is that there's sort of two X factors for both of these devices in terms of like an everyday user and something that's going to practically affect them on a day-to-day -day basis, right? So of course, you have the ultimate productivity work-related tools for an everyday user. So like for me personally, my clinical work as a therapist, being able to use the S Pen on my 23 Ultra or my Fold 5, being able to jot down notes as though my device is a notepad is amazing. Samsung DeX being able to have what essentially turns into a PC when you hook it up to a monitor is amazing. Not everyone's gonna need or want those things, but I think for me and for a lot of people, those are applicable, powerful use cases. On the iPhone side of things, there's a lack of multitasking, there's no S Pen, there is no Samsung DeX, even though this thing is more than capable of doing it. But what you do have is a sense of community and unity, right? So I talked about in my one week review for the iPhone 15 Pro Max, how it's nice that you can FaceTime your family and friends with memojis, you can play different games within the texting application, you can send memoji videos, which I've been doing a lot for my girlfriend in the morning telling her good morning i hope she has a nice day and so those things are something that prior to like actually using an iphone realistically every single day as a main daily driver never really clicked with me but after using it i can genuinely say that's a unique part of a phone experience that you don't really get on a galaxy s23 ultra or any galaxy device for that matter right in the wild you might run into someone who has a fold 5 and like that's cool rcs is cool but there are certain smaller intricate things that you just don't really get unless you're on an iPhone in that community, that connection aspect. Having USB-C on the iPhone is great as well because if you say you're transferring log file formats, which are massive, it's gonna take too long, you can just pick up any of the other number of USB-C cables you have laying around, plug it into your MacBook and transfer the files over nice and easy. USB-C is just a standard. My iPad uses it, my MacBook uses it. And because the MacBook uses it, if you guys are looking for a VPN service that is going to be a one-time cost, not subscription-based, then Deeper Network has you covered and you're also getting a lot of of additional benefits such as an ad blocker for say like Hulu, Netflix. On Hulu you can buy the base level package, slap this bad boy in and you skip by all of the commercials. It also has built in smart routing which is automatically going to select the best network path to get you the best speeds and the best connectivity. And there's an app relocator which is going to find the locations where the pricing for say Hulu or Netflix or Paramount Plus, Apple TV, where the prices are going to be the lowest and that low price finding solution is also going to carry over to say like your travel plans, right? If you're looking to travel somewhere, finding you say the most competitively priced plane ticket. And the Deeper Network Hub has network security and privacy protection that's going to give you security and traffic visualization. It's going to help prevent malicious scanning, block harmful websites, include parental controls. And every time you use it, it's going to give you a different IP address to make it difficult for those websites that you're visiting to track your user behavior, your data. If you guys are looking for a VPN service that you don't have to pay for month after month, just one time, I'll have a link in the description down below for you guys 
RAM management is something I haven't really had to consider in a long time on phones because it's been good in phones for a really long time now. And if you're worried about keeping multiple apps open on these phones, if you're coming from an older device, you have nothing to worry about. There have literally been times during my day where I'll have multiple apps open or sometimes I'll even have an entire game open like Hunkai Star Rail, Punching Grey Raven, or even say like Yu-Gi-Oh! Master Duel or something in the background. And I have to put the phone down because I have to get to something. I'm not able to get back to the game until like later that day, way, way, way later. I'm using different apps during that time, texting people, phone calls, and I click back into the window and the game just resumes like I put the phone down five minutes ago. So if you're looking at RAM management, both phones are stellar in that way. Gaming wise, flat out, not gonna waste you guys' time. You can run maximum everything on every single game and play them flawlessly, no matter what the game is. With the small caveat that you can hit maximum everything at 120 frames per second on the 15 Pro Max, and you can't do that on the S23 Ultra. At least not in games that I've tried to do that in, like on Genshin Impact, for example, or Honkai Storo. I don't see the 120 option, I only see 60. That being said, I feel like 120 is overkill, and I'll play on 120 sometimes times on the 15 Pro Max there's a there's a difference but it's not enough where I'm like oh my god I definitely need 120 on every device I'm playing 60 FPS maximum everything looks great the shadows and the lighting on the 15 Pro Max in games like Genshin Impact and Hongai Store Rail just look a bit better and more realistically cast than over here on the S23 Ultra. This still looks amazing in a vacuum. If you pick it up, play a game, and maximum everything looks great. But that is something that I've noticed that is smaller and more nuanced is that like the shadows and lighting on the 15 Pro Max just look a little bit better. I'm actually editing the video right now and I've realized I forgot to talk about something. That being durability on both of these devices, um, something that I simply have not had a problem with on the S23 Ultra is like scratching and degradation of the actual integrity of the body um, in terms of like paint peeling or scratching. Or on the iPhone 15 Pro Max, I've had some nicks and scuffs on the titanium frame already. So if you guys are looking for some cases, I'll have a link in the description down below with my code that you guys can use for a percentage off. Um, outside of that, let me know if you guys are going for the Galaxy or the iPhone. Thank you guys so much again for stopping by and hanging out. As always, I wish you a fantastic remainder of your day, afternoon, or night, depending on the time it is you're watching this. And as always, uh, peace, love, and adios. Bye.